Hi guys, this is Doug. I wanted to close the loop on the work that we did last year. And that work is regarding uh, coming up with a demo framework for MDM Server that lets us take advantage of um, more modern, more attractive UIs and UI frameworks. So uh, I'm going to close the loop by recording these three quick videos. In the first one, I'm going to show you an actual working application, this one right here, um, that was built using graphical tools it's a dojo based UI uh, again built with graphical tools I'm going to show you what it looks like and how it works uh, in video number one here in video number two I'm going to talk about the configuration that was necessary to get this set up from an MDM server point of view and, and I don't mean configuring the server environment because we can use the standard demo image but more in this application in the client how does it know anything about the MDM server data structures or XML formats or, or transactions or services and what needs to be called. There's some configuration that needs to take place. We'll take a look at that in video number two. And then in the third video, I want to just drop right into the video visual designer and show you how to work with the tools to create an application that looks like this. So those are the three videos I'm going to hopefully get recorded today. Um, all right. In this first video I want to show you just what the application looks like and you can see we have a data grid of, um, of person names here these are actually customers that reside inside of the MDM server uh, repository we got them on the screen by invoking the search person service and if I wanted to um, to take a look at some different names I could just call the service again give it a different search argument and you can see I get a different list of names if I want to see names or customers whose last name begin with the letter B, for example, I can get a, uh, this list. If I want to see customers whose last name begin with MA, I can do that search. In each case, I'm just invoking the MDM server, search person service, and that's what we did. To take a look at how the application itself works, you can see I can now click on the names and a couple things happen. First of all, you'll notice that down here in the detail form that this information is refreshed based on the person that I select. So if I want to you know, select Dave Maid, I see his details. If I see or select Richard Mason, I see his details. But also at the same time, what's happening under the covers is we're calling the get person service from MDM server to get all of the information about Richard so that we have it available to us. Uh, let me draw your attention to these tabs up here. So you can see I've got uh, tabs for names, addresses, contact methods, identifiers. You'll recognize these as other related objects or pieces of information about customers that we manage or keep track of inside of MDM server. If I want to look at the names uh, for Richard Mason, I'll just select this tab. And what it does, just by selecting this tab, it goes out and it, it invokes the get all person name service and re retrieves the names that we have on file in this case it's just one now what I may want to do is to add a middle name so let me select the name that we have on file you can see again just by selecting the name the information is refreshed down here and uh, I'll add a prefix we'll call him Mr. Richard Scott Mason I click save and a couple things happen at this point so first of all you'll see the display is refreshed with the new information I've updated and then also under the covers we've called the update person name transaction to um, to actually persisted information back to MDM server so let's look at I mean, another example piece of information that we have addresses and once again we have only one uh, one address on file currently for Richard and by selecting that address I refresh the information down here in the detail form but if I want to add a new address all I need to do is clear that information out and then to begin to type in the new information uh, for this additional address and I'm just going to give them a PO box and I'll click submit to add the address and you can see again the display is refreshed with the new address um, and uh, I guess that's pretty much it the rest of the tabs work the same uh, this is an application uh, as you can see and I and I, I 
went through the uh, made the effort as I was going through to just call out the transactions that were being invoked not so much that they had any particular significance to them uh, it's the same kinds of list of transactions that we do in, in all our demos but just to show you there really is a lot happening under the covers we can take this application and wire it to services for organizations instead of people uh, products instead of customers uh, the basic framework of the application is the same. And the only other thing I want to do in this video while I'm here is to to show you that some stuff actually happened under the covers because right now you're just looking at the GUI. Uh, you don't, you'd have to take my word for it to know that anything happened. But if we come out here, I actually saved all the records or the XML for all the transactions that were called. Uh, so um, these are, you know, you can see there's, uh, you know, here's the searches that we did. Here's uh, me retrieving the details for the individual people I selected, getting their addresses, updating the person name, updating the address, and so forth. And this is the folder that has the XML for the requests. Let's actually take a look at the responses because then we can indeed validate that, uh, that these transactions were successful. So when I added the name, for example, um, or actually I updated the name, we'll take a look at that you can see here's update person name you can see it was successful and if I come back to here to uh, to look at the address that we added you can see I called an ad party address it was successful here's the date timestamp here's the identifier that came back so these were in fact real MDM server transactions that were called under the covers and with that I guess I will uh, I will stop uh, because I, I, I think this is pretty representative of what the application looks like.